Well, good morning. Uh, quick little video today. There again, questions on the Zenith list that have come up that, you know, we've kind of answered and they're getting rehashed a little bit. But one of them is rivet heads. And uh, I'm going to go over about how to form a rivet head. Now, I did a video of this early on when I first started out quite a while back. And I, uh, I posted that video as a reference for an individual to ask about rivet heads and where he could source them and what he needed to do. And um, so I went ahead and referenced this video. While I was there, well, I, I watched this video, and it's one of my early videos, and it was terrible. <laughs> Out of focus and just not a good video at all. The, the material's fine in it. It explains the process, but I think we can do a little bit better job. So let's uh, go over it. This is a quick and easy process. There's nothing to it. Anybody can do it in their home shop. Now, Zenith will machine your heads. You know, if you've ordered the kit and ordered their rivet guns, they're going to come with machined heads. If you've got your rivet gun or, or rivet puller that you want to use, you can send them to Zenith, and I think for a very nominal cost, they'll machine your heads for them and ship them back to you. If you're not in this country and you've ordered a tail kit, such as if you're in Australia or something, you probably don't want to wait for all that. So it's quick and easy and inexpensive to machine your own heads. It only takes a few minutes to do each one. There's nothing complicated about it. Dimensions are not hard. They're, you know, we're not dealing in rocket science here. If you're capable of building an airplane, you're certainly capable of machining your own rivet head. So this is the rivet head we're going to be machining. This is for A4 rivets, and this is my A4 gun. So this is a head that's already been machined. A4s and A5s use the exact same tooling. The procedure is exactly the same for either one. So the way we start out, they're designed just to pull a flat rivet, as we know. We're going to put our A4s in there, and what we want to do is we're going to take a quarter-inch carbide burr, and um, that's all it is, quarter inch carbide burr, I'll link in the description Amazon links to all of this stuff if you don't want to source them locally or can't source them locally. You're going to be able to find this at any store that's got Dremels in it. You want to be sure and use a carbide burr. It can also be done with a grinding stone, but I think the carbide burr is inexpensive enough. It works fine. Um, it's going to be your best and most consistent bet to do it. After I get it ground with that, you can use either just a piece of silicone carbide sandpaper, or I'm going to use a Kratex wheel here which this is just a coarse Kratex, and then we're going to polish it with a felt bob with some rouge. And there again, it can all be done by hand. You can take a standard pencil with a pencil eraser or a dowel and just glue a uh, small piece of silicone carbide on the end, and you can use that to polish it. So anyway, we're going to cut out this, uh, this head so that our radius is just smaller than the, the radius of the rivet itself. We're going to take our little burr and put it in our Dremel. I think we probably all know how to do that. And then all you do is we're going to spin our drill. test fit our rivet. See how close we are. You want it to be just the exact same as the diameter or slightly smaller than the diameter of your rivet head. I think we can go just a little bit more. Try that right there. Let's go ahead and change out our little carbide burr for a piece of Kratex. Actually, it won't take very much polishing on that at all.
pretty good. Take our little polishing bob. I think that looks just fine. Now before I take it out of the drill, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it over the belt sander and I'm just going to very lightly match this contour on the outside because I don't need that much sticking out over the, that much extra. That's just something that's going to interfere with your, uh, when you pull a rivet it's going to interfere with the skin on it. So we'll just turn that down a little bit and we'll come back and take a look at it. There's the outer diameter. That matches up real nice. Now I did take it to my little electric buffer and buff the outside. You can polish that by hand. You can actually leave it rough, but it's nice to have that nice smooth surface. It's just a just a little nicety there. Pop it out of there and take a look at it. So that's what we end up with. So now let's go ahead and put it in the rivet gun. See how well it's going to pull rivets. I regulate my air to about 45 pounds. I've got it a little bit higher on this. I pulled a few rivets the other day with it and uh, it seemed to be a little bit underpowered. Of course it's cold as can be still out here. There's our head installed in the gun. And I've already pre-drilled and deburred some aluminum pieces here. Let's just stick a couple in here. Keep it lined up. And we'll just pull the first one here. Yep, we're still a little underpowered here. Let's, oh, we won't wear it down to about 40 pounds there. There's our first rivet. There's nothing at all wrong with the way that's pulled. There's our pulled rivets. Quick and easy. Now there's no reason at all that can't be done in the home shop. I think it took me less than, well I know it took me less than 10 minutes to do that rivet head and that included me messing around with the cameras and, and playing around with stuff here. Um, you know it's it's something that yes if you're not comfortable doing it by all means you know order, order rivet heads from Zenith, have them machine your heads, whatever the case may be. But um, 
there's no reason at all that in, if you're qualified to build an airplane, you certainly can form your own rivet heads. There's no heat treating them. There's no tempering them. You know, years past, guys have said that well, they had to had to take the heat treat out. They had to anneal those and had to soften them to be able to machine them. With a carbide burr, you don't have to. Um, it cuts just fine. I don't know how hard these heads are, but I've not run into a head yet over the course of about five different rivet guns that I've had to anneal and, or had to, to uh, soften any of them. So it's not necessary for what we're doing with them. A $10 burr from Amazon and, and um, you know, less than less than fifteen or twenty dollars everybody's gonna have a Dremel if you're building an airplane so a lot of times we hear these naysayers say oh you've got to do it this way or you've got to do it that way or you've got to order it from whoever no you don't this is all stuff that can be very easily done in the home shop as far as dimensions you saw the way I dimensioned that right there that's all you've got to do the same thing works for A5 rivet heads um, if you're messing around with A6 rivets which are the next bigger size to to fill in for a oversized A5 rivet hole or something like that, you can machine those the exact same way. So anyway, not rocket science. Hopefully I've given you a little bit of information about how to do something quickly and easily. Hopefully you found something useful here. Uh, comments or suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.